Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video is going to be my January reading wrap up, and let's just say I had a great month. Um, but before I begin, my voice may go up and down during this video. If you guys follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, you understand, um, or you rather you not understand but you know that um i lost my voice for a couple days it's not all the way there i'm still dealing with it um i probably really shouldn't be making this video if my mother frown thought i was making videos she would yell at me see there it goes she would yell at me but um i still wanted to get this content out and i know a lot of you guys are telling me to rest and relax but i don't know i just i don't like just sitting in the house literally i'm a stay-at-home mom so just sitting around doing nothing um, tends to kill me especially when there are videos that I want to make so hopefully I don't suffer too much I do have a coffee here um, I probably should be drinking tea but I've had coffee tea water I've been taking mucinex I've took um, the throat spray I've had hauls nothing is working so um, if it doesn't get rectified by Thursday I'm just gonna go to urgent care and make sure I'm not like sick or anything like that but um, yeah so we're here to do this video and this is going to be like i said my january reads and studies wrap up um and also my faith reads readathon wrap up which i had such an excellent month of reading i think every book that i've read was at least a four star rating except for one book i gave it a three stars and dnf it it wasn't bad i just i guess i was overloaded on the genre so i'm gonna go through all the 10 books that I read for the Faith Reads Readathon, and then I'll get to the last four books that um, were a part of the readathon, but not based on a prompt, if that makes sense. So, I have my little notebook here. I keep a notebook with all the information for the videos that I make, but I also have my printout here. So, where do I begin? Okay, so let's start off with the Faith Reads Readathon prompt. So, the first prompt was to read a book based on a well known biblical. Um, person and for that I went with Iscariot by Tosca Lee biblical fiction this talks about um, Iscariot obviously the betrayer of Jesus and I gave this a 4.75 star rating all my reviews will be linked down below for you guys if you're interested in my written reviews because I'm not the best at like verbal reviews but I thoroughly enjoyed this a lot um, this was a really interesting take on what um, Iscariot could have been like again we don't know anything about Iscariot all that we know is that he betrayed Jesus for 30 shekels and um, that Jesus picked him as one of the disciples he was the only disciple that Jesus called friend and we also know that Jesus knew that um, Judas was going to betray him we also know that Judas of course committed suicide um, because of he, him betraying Jesus so we don't know anything else beyond that. We don't know about his life. We don't know about his upbringing. We don't know about his thought process. We just know the basics that the Bible gives us. So the fact that Tosca was able to craft such a heart-wrenching story around the scripture was, like, phenomenal. You guys can see my tabs, okay? My tabs. This book. Um, now, it's in no way, shape, saying that I like Judas. I still don't like what he did. He was wrong. But I like the fact that she made his upbringing so hard for him um that he witnessed so much death and that he was among one of those people that thought that the king would come and kill the romans um that's basically pretty much what he thought he thought that the coming messiah would be the one to kill off the romans to um help free the jews that way but obviously he thought wrong his uh think the process was not correct and um eventually he ended up betraying jesus of course in this we are told that he's betraying him not on purpose but to sort of save jesus and everyone else because obviously this is around the time that uh the pharisees and the scribes are trying to kill him and um judas thought he was trying to do something to save him jesus as well as other people so um this this was really good i gave it a 4.75 star rating i did have a slight problem with a few things but um that's just me as a reader um nothing as far as like the text i think she really stuck to scripture really well um she really dove in the scripture you can see all the purple tab she did a great job of using the scripture to really create a foundation and this book is broken down into four sections so um i thoroughly enjoyed it i think it's interesting that she starts out with the epilogue literally like the first chapter it says epilogue um which is pretty much you seeing him kill himself and then it goes back to when he was a child and um he endured a lot of things just oh, he witnessed a lot his, he he didn't see it in person but he, he witnessed his father and his brother die 
uh, not his brother. His brother's not dead. He, he, <laughs> you have to read it. It was, it was a lot. He witnessed his father die. Um, like he saw his father on the cross crucified. Um, tragic. Something happened with his brother, which I don't want to tell you guys about. Then when he gets older, he gets married and something happens with that. It, it was just, I, I loved it a lot. I really enjoyed it a lot. So I gave it a 4.75 star rating. Really, really great book. Highly recommend it. And I'm so glad that I, I finally got a chance to reading this. This was my first Tosca Lee book. I know that she writes a lot of other, um, outside of biblical fiction. She writes, um, oh my god what is it suspense novels i think it is suspense or mystery so i want to get into those as well but um she also has hava which is about eve and then she has the queen of sheba so i'm gonna get my hands on those two books to read um i own let me not say that i own the ebooks but i want physical books this was excellent i highly recommend it if you guys are interested in biblical fiction so i enjoyed this following that i the second prompt was to read a book on a lesser known biblical person and for that i went with Zipporah wife of moses by merrick halter this is the first book and what is this the canaanite the Canaanite. Why did I just say the Canaanite? I think it's called the Canaan Trilogy. Yeah, it's book two in the Canaan Trilogy. Um, the first one is Sarah. The sec the third one is Leah. This is the second one. And um, I gave this a four star rating. This was really good. The reason why I gave it four stars, I'm, I'm going to do a whole actual like sit down review of this book because I think it's really important for me to do a review on this. But, <laughs> okay, let me just show you guys. Tabs, great book. Zipporah as a character was great. Zipporah was a dark-skinned, um, I believe she was Kushite, um, a Kush from Kush, um, but she lived in Midian with her father Jethro and her sisters, and, um, this book did a phenomenal job of taking scripture, of course, like I said, uh, but the only reason why I couldn't really give it a five stars is because I'm struggling, I'm, even to this day, I'm still struggling with my rating for this, so I want to give it five stars so bad, but I'm not sure if I should give it a four, 4.5, 4.75, five star, I don't know, I want you guys' opinion. So, with this book, this book, okay, so Christian fiction normally does fade to black scenes when it comes to romance. So, it's kind of like, you know that they're getting ready to do the do, but they have the fade to black where they say, oh, they kissed, and then they move on to, like, the, the couple waking up or something. This does not do that. Um, it's not, like, graphic, like, if you're reading a regular secular romance novel where they, like, go in depth about the sex scenes, but, uh they got the sex scenes written out on this i was like Ooh. now it didn't bother me as a reader I i'm a romance reader so it did not bother me at all but the reason why i'm saying four star is because it might trigger some people um i'm not one of those people that it triggers i mean the bible talks so much about sex and it talks about um you know the genocides and the killings and the murders but my thing is when it comes to biblical or christian fiction is there a limitation to what an author should write personally i think this is five star off the bat personally but because i also have to take into account other people and other readers and other mindsets i'm saying a four star because of that because the, the scenes are written out like there's three scenes where they talk about the sex and i'm just like oh okay moses and zipporah out here doing what they do now the first time they had i think the first Two times they had sex, they weren't married. Um, the third time, I believe they were married. Or, I don't even know. Were they even married? I don't know. But, this was crazy. Like, I, I have to do a review on this because I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm saying a four-star, but it's really a five-star read for me. But, um, Zipporah was phenomenal, and she dealt with a lot of racism, basically, is what I'm going to call it. A lot of people called her, um, black. They, they, they just discriminated against her because of her skin color. Um, because she was not the actual like biological daughter of jethro which i thought was interesting um her two sisters piss uh what is this girl's name it's not orma is it one of her sisters yeah orma orma pissed me off i'm sorry she was the most annoying child ever there is another sister that i actually did like and i can't think of her name right now i'm really trying to find this sister's name um Sephoba. So, Sephoba, I love Sephoba. She's phenomenal. Um, she was the older sister, and she was really comical, and she was very much into her sexuality, which I enjoyed. Um, again, that brings the question, is there a limit when you're writing biblical fiction or Christian fiction? Um, and it's not that it's written in a disgusting way or anything like that, but, um... It just brings to mind, because I know a lot of people, when they read biblical fiction or Christian fiction, they don't want that in their books. Um, like I said, for me as a reader, it doesn't bother me. 
um i enjoyed it thoroughly um there were scenes where they were like talking about sex and being funny about it i thought it was comical because a lot of the times when we read biblical fiction and christian fiction we don't look at these people as if they're like us like they're humans with emotions and feelings and i think that's what i enjoy about finding authors like merrick halter or even like patrick w Carr when he wrote the end of the magi that book was graphic and gruesome with the death and the murder and i was like oh my god but I love that it got real and raw. The same thing with Isaiah's Legacy from Miso Andrews that's coming out next week. Like, it got real and raw. And for me as a reader, especially when I'm reading biblical fiction, I want it to be really based off the Bible. I don't want it to hold back on um, what it's talking about or things like that. So, I don't know. For me, it's a five star, but I'm saying four star. But like I said, I'm going to do a whole uh, video review on this because it really brings a good discussion and I would love for you guys to let me know like do you think there should be a limit especially because the bible is so real and so raw and it's out there like things are written in the bible but we don't really like to um read about them or talk about them like a lot of parents don't talk about sex with their kids but you know I feel like you shouldn't talk about sex I mean sex is sex God created sex it's not a bad thing um but unfortunately the enemy created uh, not created but the enemy um, found a way to make it perverse so i don't know let me know what your thoughts are in the description down below in the comment section um because i don't i don't i want to talk about this book but i I'm, I'm rambling four stars moving on okay so the next and third prompt was to read a book with a title based on a book from the bible so like a book that had esther power of psalms or whatever in the title i had to i had thief of corn but i didn't end up reading that by tessa abshar um i probably will reread it sometime this year but i didn't get a chance to get that one but i did do 31 proverbs like your path by liz curtis higgs this was a phenomenal devotional i gave it four stars i enjoyed it a lot um i was able to talk back to the text and what i mean by that is i was annotating and having conversations with the text and i found that everything that liz was talking about in the book was so real and relatable i really connected more so to the last two days in the book um because she actually talked about romance novels and how she you know, she used to enjoy romance novels and how she had to um, really pray and ask God to help her with that. And I thought it was interesting because that's how I was. I was heavy with the romance novels. And a lot of people get shocked when I say that I read BDSM novels or erotic novels. That's what I read. I'm not going to sit here and try to sugarcoat it. I did things in my past. I read things in my past. Um, was it edifying to my spirit? No. Was it something that God would uh, uh, would um, condone? No. But that is the point of being a Christian. We make mistakes, we do things, and then we learn. It took me years to learn. I don't even remember the last time I read a book with sex in it, honestly. Uh, well, outside of Zipporah. But um, secular-wise, I I don't think any of the books I've read within the past month or two had any sex in them. I'm, I'm not going to say that 100% because I still read fantasy novels. Um, and of course, they're going to have sex. But when I say sex, I mean like outright, just straight crazy written scenes is what i mean um so i thought it was amazing that she wrote that um because she used to read historical romances and historical romances they be having some weird covers <laughs> and they be having some really like raunchy scenes so the fact that she put that in here i could relate to her on that level so i thought it was phenomenal this is a great devotional um so i highly recommend it if you guys are interested in checking this out okay so prompt four was to read a christian nonfiction. for that i went with calling and separation by bob yandon this i gave four stars it is a five star read but for me because i knew a lot of the stuff already i gave it four stars basically he gives a definition for what calling is and what separation is and he uses the prophet elisha um in his time before he became the next prophet after elijah and i thought it was amazing he basically lets you know that calling everyone has a calling we are all called we all have a purpose but many are not um so few are chosen and being chosen is about you being separated and about um you being spiritually mature so i thought this was phenomenal um like for me i i related it back to myself where we're all called to speak the gospel we're all called to um really proclaim the gospel but there are few chosen for the position of being an evangelist or a prophet or being a pastor or an elder and things like that so that's how i was able to correlate it to, for me um for me i knew for a long time that i was called but it wasn't until last year of august that i finally became separated for that call if that makes sense so that's how i was able to correlate it to myself but i think this is great bob yannon does have excuse me pastor bob yannon does have a youtube channel um i watch some of his videos every now and then i do have another book on leadership which focuses on king david i definitely want to get my hands on more of his books but you can just click the on the screen over here to go to his channel and check out his videos
Okay, so prompt five was to read a book about good versus evil. For that, I had Mind Games by Nancy Mahal, but I moved it around to another prompt. So I ended up putting in this one. This is Kimberly Gray's Ascendant. It is the first book in the Ascendant trilogies. It's Christian Fantasy YA, and I gave this four stars. Yes, I'm just looking at my ratings. I did give it a four star rating. I enjoyed this a lot. I really love the names of the characters because the names really correlated back to um, different virtues and things and characteristics we believe a Christian should have, like grace and honor and um oh my god i can't think of the charity and things like that so i really love the name there's allegiance um noble like the names are really great i loved the idea that this flipped the colors so the black wings were the good angels and the white wings were the evil angels um or bad angels and you had grace who's a saboteur for the white wings and she gets caught by the black wings and she begins to learn a lot about the truth and things like that and learn about god and they do reference god in this um as i don't know what they call him i think it's the light i think they call him the light but i don't i'm trying to find out what they call him they say the messenger they call him the father so like i don't really know exactly what, but um, I like that she wrote this book. And I'm definitely excited to read the other two books. And there's also a novella coming out. So I'm super excited and so glad that she sent this book to me for review. So we have this. Okay, so prompt six was to read a five-star prediction. I took a photo. I posted here with a bunch of books that I thought were five-star reads. And um, most of them were not really five-star reads, but they were still good. Like, they were like 4.5, 4.75. But um, I had put my games as, from Nancy Mahell as one of the books. This one I ended up giving a 4.5-star rating. This is a romantic suspense, and I buddy read this with my sister Stephanie. Click the I to go to her channel from Quilting Beauty and Books. Okay, if you're a fan of um, Criminal Minds, read this. This reads like a Criminal Minds, the TV show. However, I gave it a 4.5 because of that ending. That ending just pissed me off. Um, we pretty much, me and Stephanie, were in discussion about who the po possible killer could have been, and... Um, she guessed it and I was like well I hope it's not him because I actually did like that character but when the character actually came to be the one who was the killer I was I was okay but then when I got further into the story like towards the end and they he explained his reasoning it pissed me off so I took it from a five star to a 4.5 but um that's just personal preference so it is a five star prediction five star read but because of that ending and how I emotionally felt with that ending Mm -mm, 4.5 star um but this follows uh oh my god kaylee quinn it's the first book in the kaylee quinn profiler series trilogy i do have the second book i'm going to be reading that and i'm also going to get my hands on the third book when it comes out but this book follows her and she is a behavioral analysis um for the fbi and she basically has to find the serial killer who is killing people because of her and he sends a poem about elephants it's good um, if, like I said, if you like NCIS, read it. Not NCIS. If you like Criminal Minds, read this book. Loved it. Moving on. Um, prompt seven was to read a Christian fiction that is not biblical, so anything fantasy, contemporary, historical, suspense, things like that. I, again, had Nancy Mahel's Mind Games, but then I switched it over for Endgame by Rachel Dillon. This, again, was a great book. I'm looking for my rating for this. I think it was a four. Yep, yeah, a four point five as well. Um... This I, is actually a 5-star, but because of the pacing of this, I gave it a 4.5-star rating. This reads like an NCIS episode, um, and I love NCIS. <laughs> yes, I do. Criminal Minds, NCIS, SVU, um, Blue Bloods, all that. Th that's that's what I love. I love. Law and Order, we, I love. Um, this read exactly like an NCIS episode, and it deals with the Navy um, and the FBI and the military. And, yeah, there's a serial killer out here killing people within the Army or in the military, excuse me, and they have to figure out who it is. They think it's a sniper, but it's not the sniper, and you just have to read it. The only reason I gave it a 4.5 because it dragged on, and that's how I feel about NCIS episodes. You know how, like, it's really, like, one episode, but one episode drags out for, like, four episodes? <laughs> like, why? Why? Was it good? I loved it. Um, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Bailey. So, Bailey and Marco. They were, like, the cutest thing ever, but I enjoyed this a lot. So, prompt number eight was to read a book with one of the nine fruits of the spirits in the title. For this, I started but didn't finish it because I felt like this was definitely going to be one that was going to be hard. So, it's um, Love by Robert Strand, which is a part of his nine fruits of the spirit devotional series. I did start it. Um, like, I definitely started it. If you guys can see, I like started highlighting and reading. But um, I noticed that as I was getting into it, as you guys can see, it was a lot more of an intent 
it's one of those books that you have to be intentional with. Um, so I decided to pause on this and just do it another day. So, um, yeah. So then prompt number nine was to read a Christian classic. And for that, I read Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I gave it four stars. So it's really good. I enjoyed it. Um, C.S. Lewis has a roundabout way of getting you to understand something and is repetitive. Like he repeats the same concept multiple times. But he also gives you multiple examples for you to understand, which normally I would find that absolutely annoying. But for some reason with his book, it was phenomenal. And I did listen to the audiobook as well. Um, so this would have been the second one that I read from him. And I did annotate. I just don't have like any colors yet in here. I think for like the first two chapters I did. Yeah, for the first few chapters I did use my colors. I do have to go back for the other ones, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I read the school tape letters, gave that five stars, but Mere Christianity gave four stars. I'm excited to read the next one. Um, the next book I plan to read is going to be The Great Divorce um, from him, but I did enjoy Mere Christianity a lot and definitely recommend it. It just talks about um, Christianity on a, on a surface level but with a deeper understanding and I highly recommend it so we had that and then the last prompt was to read a recommendation and so many people recommended Left Behind to me by Jerry B. Jenkins and um, Tim LaHaye this book I gave four stars yes four stars too this was freaking epic oh my god I need to know what happens next because Nikolai Carpathian is the devil um I love Rayford Rayford not gonna lie pissed me the hell off at the beginning of this book oh my god I could not stand him Mm, I got fools for Rayford. Um, and then you have Buck, which I think they call, is it Buck or is it Bruce? I think it's Buck, and his real name is Cameron. He is a um, journalist or something like that. He works for a newspaper. He's a smart guy. Um, I also like uh, Rayford's daughter, and there's also Bruce, of course. And I'm just, I'm excited to read Tribulation Force. I, we need, because after what happened, like, this was really going to be a four-star read. No, I think it was going to be a three-star. Um... But then I got to the end. Actually, let me let me clarify my rating because now I'm getting confused with my rating. So I'm going to go on Goodreads real quick and clarify. But I believe I gave it four stars. Was it a five star? Okay. So yeah, four star. It was going to be a 3.75 star rating, but that ending is what killed me with, with what Nikolai Carpathian did. So <laughs> this is an adult dystopian Christian fiction. I don't even know how to describe it because it's like, I, I don't know, but it's good. It's good. And I'm definitely going to be reading one one of these a month because oh, 13 books in a series. I'm going to try to read two of the books this month just because um, they're the two, the next two books, books two and three are really small. So, um, yeah, but mm, the fails, the fails, but we have that. Okay. So... <clears throat> The next four books are a part of the Faith Reads, of course, because the whole point was just to read Christian fiction books, but they were not a part of the prompt. So we have On Wings of Devotion by Rosanna and White. This is the second book in the Cold Breakers trilogy. I do have the first one, which is called The Number of Love. Haven't read it yet, but this book I gave a four star as well. Um, I really enjoyed this. This follow follows Arabelle. Is her name Arabelle? Yeah, Arabelle Dendler, who is a nurse, and she's pretty much wealthy. She got an inheritance from her aunt, and it also follows Major Major Philip Camden, who is a very dark brooding man. Um, he is going through a situation with having left. Um, oh my God, what's what is it that he left? Um, I don't remember what it was he did. He was a pilot for a squad. He, he his he was a pilot, but I don't. Was it the Air Force? Air, I don't. I don't know. It doesn't say on the back what it was, but um, yeah. Uh, I love the two of them together. Oh my God, they're just so stinking cute. They're funny. They're just comical and everything in between. Um, I love this so much. The romance was everything. The suspense aspects to it, I didn't really care for. There is a character in here that is German. Um, she kind of pissed me off just just slightly. But um, I did enjoy this and definitely do want to read the first book that I own. So we have that. The next book we have is American Omens by Travis Thrasher. This is a sci-fi, dystopian, sort of futuristic Christian fiction novel. I gave this four stars. I thoroughly enjoyed this a lot. Um, it follows Cheyenne Bru What's her name? Ooh. Cheyenne Byrne. Excuse me. Cheyenne Byrne. The year is 2038. And basically, um, Christianity is... Uh, 
illegal, I guess. It's not right. If you're a Christian, you're you're kind of named as a terrorist, and it follows three characters. Um, it follows Cheyenne. It follows another guy. I can't think of his name right now. Will. It follows Cheyenne, Will, and I think the killer, who is Dowlin. Yeah, Dowlin. Um, Dowlin works for the FBI. Um, his job is to find out who the Reckoner is, and the Reckoner is basically a prophet in this time. Um, he's not Jesus, but he is a prophet, sort of like how John the Baptist was. Um, uh, the the one to prepare the way for Jesus. He's a prophet to prepare people for the way of the return of Jesus Christ. And um, this was really interesting. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish it was a sequel because that ending just killed me. But uh, this was good. This was really good. There was a mystery aspect to it. Um, lots of deaths. Lo lots of death and murder. Um, but uh, there was a twist as well with Will as one of the POVs. There was a major twist with Will. Um, that I, I did not honestly see coming. I didn't see coming, um, but I thought it was great, and I thoroughly enjoyed this. If you um, want a sort of suspense, sci-fi, dystopian, futuristic story, definitely read this. This felt a little surreal for me because we are coming to those times, and I know some people in other countries, in third world countries, that are Christians, they are being killed and slaughtered because they're Christians. So, you know, in this book, it was illegal to own a Bible, read Christian books. It, it was... This was a crazy world, okay? But um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, so four star. Okay, and then I read The Way of Brave by Susan May Warren. This is contemporary romance. I enjoyed this. It's the first book in the search, the Global Search and Rescue. There we go, book one. And this takes place in Alaska on the Denali, I think it's the Denali Mountain. Um, it follows Orion Starr and Jenny Calhoun. They both used to work together out in Afghanistan, but there was... Um, a job that went wrong because of Jenny but it really wasn't her fault but she took the blame and Orion and her actually fell in love back in Afghanistan but they didn't really reveal much about each other because I believe she worked for the FBI and um, he was just a para rescuer she was CIA excuse me she was CIA profiler um, and they were in the Taliban at that time excuse me and um, you know they were against the Taliban sorry and it was pretty much a second chance romance, if you think about it. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I gave this, I'm sorry, I'm guys, I'm looking down. I gave this four stars. Again, great romance. Um, I really just love their connection. Um, I thought the danger was, like, real. It read like a movie to me. Um, one of those movies, like, when you're out in the mountains on the snowy peaks and you fall and you have to find your way back to safety. Kind of like that. But you also throw in the romance in there. There were two couples. You had Jenny and Orion and then Jenny's friend as well as Orion's friend. And um, there was another lady there that I, I just, I, I thought it was cute. I can't think right now. My brain, I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm sick. Yeah, but it was great. So, I highly recommend it. Okay, the final book that I have is um Lynette Easton's Collateral Damage. This is romantic suspense. Um it follows a former military psychiatrist and former army special ops sergeant first class Asher James. Now I only made it to chapter twelve. I read chapters one through eleven, stopped at chapter twelve, you guys can see marked it. Um I DNF this book. It wasn't that the book was bad at all. There was nothing wrong with this book. I think I just overloaded on reading the uh suspense romantic suspense back to back that when I got to this book I was just drained um and I probably should not do that next time I should probably spread them out throughout the month um I did give it a three stars because I was enjoying it but it was just dragging for me and I got overloaded on the romantic suspense that I had to stop um but what I did read I did enjoy and I definitely do plan to pick this up maybe in a month or two pick it back up to reread it but um we have that so that is it for my January reads and studies wrap up. Very, very long. Lots of great reads. Like I said, I pretty much had an excellent month of reading from 4 to 4.75 star ratings. Um, one three star because it was a slight DNF. It wasn't a hard DNF. Um, but I cannot wait to just see how this month goes. The month of February, I'm super excited for the books. I don't have that many books on but this month because I'm, I'm focusing on reading a lot more secular books that are written by black authors. However, um, in March, I have an exciting, an exciting project I'm working on that I'm not going to talk about until I get the project together. Um, it's going to be like a reading blog kind of series thing that I'm working on. 
So, I'm super excited. But that is it for this video. The next video I'm going to record in the same outfit. And that's going to be my TBR for February. So, that is it. If you are not subscribed to the family, join Become a Daughter of Increase. Become a Son of Increase. And if you are subscribed, click the bell to say notified. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.